Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. I've just been getting stirred in worship, stirred in these messages we've been hearing. Guys, he's real. He's real. Oh, he's so real. Last night we heard from, from Pastor Nate, right? Purity at all costs. Purity for the Lord. In, in, in spite of everything else, forsaking everything else, purity, so that we can approach God. Guys, I'll lay anything down so that I can approach God. Oh, oh, and, and worship, worship last night, the, and this morning we, we sang a song about the goodness of God, right? Yeah. Um, King of my heart, you're the mountain. Oh, he's so good, guys. A year ago, a year ago at Pursuit Conference, my wife and I, we had just moved back from Kona, Hawaii. We were doing missions work there with Youth with a Mission. We'd come back to Cincinnati, Ohio, where we both were from. We had no Christian friends. We had nobody to plug into, and we loved Jesus. But without, without Christian friends, and this is a freebie, you're going to fall. If you don't have community, if you don't have other people you can link arms with and run to the Lord with, it's hard to stay on track. So we prayed, God, we need a family. Give us a family because ours, they're not following the Lord. And a year ago, I stood in the back and I was helping a little bit. I led some people to McDonald's, really serving the Lord there for lunch. And, and somebody came to me and said, you know what, the Lord sees you. He sees your heart. And he's with you. Don't worry. And it was a hard time in our lives. But a year ago, I was there. And now I'm standing before you with the mic in my hand, with the privilege, the utter privilege, to talk to you about the best, most beautiful, most radically loving God that has ever been spoken of. Guys, it is real. He is so good. Oh, he's so good. Oh, my friends. I wish, I went 21 years, I went 21 years on this earth, I heard about Jesus, I knew all the stories, I knew that that he, he, he fed some people somewhere, I knew he walked on some water on a boat, he woke up, his friends uh, were scared, they weren't very good, he picked some weird guys that nobody liked, I knew all this stuff, but I didn't know him guys, took me 21 years to find out the goodness of God, and I wish And the reason I'm bringing this up is I wish someone had stood in front of me with a microphone and yelled it at me. Because I missed out. And I don't want you. I love you. I don't know you. But I love you too much not to tell you that he is so worth it. He's so good. Nothing you give will be be too much. Nothing. Not a thing. Not a thing in your life. If you have to break your iPhone under your heel, it's not too much. If you have to break off with your friend groups, it's not too much. If you have to quit your sport and you got a scholarship somewhere, it's not too much. He's worth it all, guys. Woo. Friends, I had some notes. I was going to preach. It was good. It was a good sermon. It was. I was going to talk about some Greek words, and there was a cool illustration. I was going to read a Bible verse. But... But it's just not as good as he is. Guys, we've got to know him. I cannot, I cannot say it enough. Friends, oh Jesus. Friends, and this, oh, this breaks my heart. If you, some of you in here, if you died, if somebody on the way back in the bus ride, right now as things stand, if you died, you would be spending eternity without him. And that's real. That's in the word. Oh, but Lord, he is good. And he will save you. Eternity is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. It's not a story we tell our young ones to scare them into morality. It's a real place. And if you're not at the place where worship is fun to you, we sing these songs. We sang them today right before I got up here about how all of eternity we'll spend dancing and singing, right? I'll sing your name forever. I'll I'll sing your goodness forever. 
And if you're sitting there, and I would have sat there, I know the feeling, if you're sitting there saying, that doesn't sound fun to me. I don't want to spend eternity in heaven if we're just going to be singing and dancing. Guys, imagine, imagine the, the hardest you've ever laughed. The hardest you've ever laughed. Pure joy in your heart. You can't catch your breath because you're so happy. There's so much joy, you're laughing, you can't catch your breath. That is what eternity will be like with him. Dancing and singing, that's, we'll do that, but that's not the feeling that we're going to have standing before the almighty creator of everything in the universe. Pure, unadulterated ec- ecstasy, ecstatic, euphoric joy. Guys, I, I don't know how long I'm going to go for. As you saw, I just kind of burned the backup plan. But let me tell you, if I preach for five minutes... Or for an hour and a half, there's no hunger. There's no hunger that's not going to be worth giving your life to the Lord. If you're sitting there hungry, if you've got to use the restroom or the bathroom, let me tell you guys, 10,000 years from now, it's not going to matter. What's going to matter? And it's real, guys. I cannot, I cannot express it enough. It is real. Hell is real. Eternity is real. I know this isn't the happy-go-lucky youth conference message some of us were hoping for. Guys, I was actually hoping for one of those messages, but as you saw, like I said before, I crumpled it up because it's more important that you know. It's more important that you believe. Like Josh said, I thought about God. I thought about him, but I didn't believe in him. I didn't put any skin in the game. But like Josh I asked the most dangerous question of God that you can ask him. I said, God, if you're real, I'm just so broken. I'm so miserable. I've got everything the world says will make me happy. I, 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 was, I was dating my wife. She was my wife. There was a real love, and I was broken and empty. I had friends who loved me. They, they would do things for me and cared about me. It was a real love, and I was broken and empty. I was broken and empty, and I said to God, Lord, I'm just done. I've got nothing left. I've sought after everything that these people around me my whole life said would make me happy. They said it would fill the hunger in my gut. They said that I'd be able to fall asleep at night and sleep well. They said that it would make me joyful and that I could laugh in a group without dying inside. But Lord, I've got nothing. So, if you're real, God prove it, and I'll do anything. Like Josh, the Lord showed up. The next morning, I got a phone call from my uncle I hadn't spoken to in years. He lived in Hawaii. His marriage was in crisis, and he went to a a group of people that he'd never heard about before called Youth with a Mission. He called me, and that's how he knew about them, and he said, Matt, I don't know what's going on in your life. I feel like I should call you. And your aunt and I, uh, I don't know if you're interested, but there's this group of people out here called Youth with a Mission. They're putting a school on in the summer. It's called the School of the Circuit Rider. And uh, we'll pay for everything. Just come out. So I'm not a rocket scientist, but that seemed like an answered prayer, guys. So the next day, I get that phone call, and I wait a few months, and I get there, and I find out. Oh, guys, I found out. You are good, good, oh, you are good, he's good, and all, oh, friends, he's good, he was real, and he filled me up, I became alive, it's worth it. Oh, guys, I had it all. I had the dream job. I had a woman who loved me. I had friends, but none of it. I'd give it all because, oh, he's good. He is real. And eternity is too much of a certainty to play guesswork with your life now. Oh, guys, oh, my friends, I dearly love you. So when I got there, 
When I got to the island, the rock in the middle of the ocean, I didn't even want to go to Hawaii. I hated the beach. Still kind of don't like it. I spent four years there. But guys, I found out. I found out what I'd been waiting 21 years to find. Because my whole life there'd been a hunger in my gut. And it wasn't just what you've talked about salvation. You've heard, you guys are here, a lot of you have heard hundreds of salvation messages. Hey, God, Jesus will fill you up. Guys, please, anyone, seriously, come here. Jesus is real. Come down. The messages you've heard your whole life. But this is different. What I'm talking about is I knew something in my brain, something in my heart said, there is more and you're called to it. There is more and you're called to it. And I was unsatisfied, like I said. Nothing could fill me up. But I found out, found out God was real and he was doing something on the earth. He was creating, he was crafting, he was calling out a move of young people, a move of a generation, regardless of age, not a generation age-wise, but a generation of followers on the planet who said, you know what? Man, I've tasted and seen that other things are not good, that the world isn't worth it, but holy smokes, there's something that is. And you know what? I will go to heaven exhausted. I'll go to heaven dimeless. I'll go to heaven with nothing on my back. And, and, and oh, Lord, if I can bring you one soul, it's worth it. Friends, you are the generation. You are this generation. It's not a hype message, okay? I'm not trying to make you feel good. But God has created you. He's knit you together. He's knit you together for a time such as this in history. The world, just a show of hands, how many of you guys feel like there's problems in the world? Okay, place your hands down, please. How many feel like that if I gave you unlimited resources, you'd know where to start fixing them? A few less hands. Quite a few less hands. That's okay, because you have been made by the crafter of history. And you were created for such a time as this, to shift the course of history forever, to shape eternity with people who will be robbed from the gates of hell because you guys have said yes to Jesus. It's your generation, and all you have to do is say yes to him and no to the other things. Say shift history for me. Shift history. Say I was made to shift history. Say it again, please. I was made to shift history. Don't think that, okay? Believe that. Because it's real, guys. It's more real than the lunch you ate today. It's more real than the chairs you're sitting in. It's more real than the clothes on your back. You have been made to shift history. In my fancy notes with Greek things in them, I had an allusion to Nehemiah in the Old Testament. I'll paraphrase. Nehemiah was a man who served the king. He was the king's cupbearer. I don't know if any of you know what a cupbearer does. It seems glamorous because you get to hang out with the king. But what you're really doing is tasting his cup to make sure that nobody's tried to poison him. So all day long... You're making sure that the king doesn't get killed by possibly dying yourself. It wasn't a glamorous job, but Nehemiah was doing it. Because he got to interact with the king so much, the king knew him well. And one day Nehemiah's family comes to him and they say, "Uh, Hey, Nehemiah, how you doing? And Nehemiah goes, Hey, uh, you guys, my brother's from Jerusalem, my home city. How I miss it. Oh, how, how, how goes it in Jerusalem? And his brothers go, Nehemiah. It's a sad time to be a Jewish man. It's a sad time. Our city's destroyed. The wall is broken down. The exiles, they're scattered. It's a horrible time. And Nehemiah's heart, it breaks. It breaks. He was a cupbearer, guys. Okay? He wasn't a fancy, theologically trained, uh, 
eschatological, you know, doctrinal genius. He was a man that said, oh my God, my city, the one the Lord loves, it's in shambles. Who am I to sit by? And the king sees how sad he is, and he says, whatever, whatever you do, I've never seen you sad before. I've never even seen you sad. Just go. Do what's in your heart. Nehemiah goes back to Jerusalem. He goes back to Jerusalem, and he rebuilds this wall that's been torn down. And the wall, it was the protection of the city. It was the safety of the city. It was the, it was the total and complete covering that the Lord had over the city. So Nehemiah rebuilds this wall. He rebuilds the wall of Jerusalem. And what happens is people hate it. They, they, they yell at him. They say, dude, you're not doing what you should be doing. What you're doing isn't right. Even his own friends try to trick him and demean him, try to get him to go into the temple without permission to take, take his face away. And that's going to happen to you guys. You're world changers. You were made to shift history. People don't want history to be changed. A lot of people are happy where they're at. They're happy with their complacency. They're happy with their compromise. But guys, not you. I know there's a hunger in your gut for something more, to change the course of history because, oh, the Lord is going to do it. He's going to do it. And guys, this might not sound happy, but he's going to do it regardless because he's God and he does what he wants. Do you want to be a part of it is the question. I want you to be a part of it. Guys, I want to look out in eternity, on the shores of eternity, and see every single one of your faces. I don't want a single one to not be there. Because, guys, it's real. Oh. So Nehemiah rebuilds this thing. And afterwards, the people start to get excited. Ezra, the priest of the day, comes. And the point of my story was that because Nehemiah rebuilt the wall and made Israel a safe place, sorry, Jerusalem, the city, a safe place, again, Ezra gets up in front of the people, and this is where we get our church tradition today, a lot of it. Ezra gets up before the people, he opens the law, he opens the law, people bow down in worship, and then Ezra talks to the people out of the word, explaining what it means. It's the first real time in all of church tradition that that happens. Because Nehemiah built a wall, we do something that he modeled thousands of years ago. He shifted history because he saw a problem and he prayed to God and he became the answer. You guys, what I found out when I got saved, because YWAMs, they're just a crazy bunch. They are. They're just, they're mad men and mad women in a good way. They're, they're just holy mischief makers. I was blessed to be a part of them. What I found out was that for really hundreds of years, people have been praying, people have been fasting, people have been crying out to God, shedding tears for him to move, for him to change the world, for him to, to get out hypocrisy in the church, for him to, to, to root out any hypocrites or, or heresy or compromise or anyone who wasn't completely for him. People have been praying, God, do it on their faces before the Lord for years and years and years. Every generation believing. Every generation waiting. I just, I'm sorry. Oh, man, I'm not sorry. You guys are the answer to that prayer. To all of those prayers. To hundreds of thousands of hours prayed and worshipped. God, do something in our nation. God, do something in our church. Lord, and you guys sitting in these chairs today are a part of the shifting of history. I know you guys probably heard Hawaii and Harrison, Ohio, and wondered how the dots got connected. It's because God's shifting history, and he's going to put people where he wants to put them. And he brought you here today because you have to hear it. You're a part of the change. You have to hear it. You're a part of the change. You are going to shift history. And not just as a generation, but as an individual. You have it in you to shift history. And as I say that, some of you guys, oh, oh, oh but he loves you. But some of you are saying, it's not me. It's not who I am. I've sinned. 
even as last night happened, I've become unpure again. I washed my hands clean, but I did the same thing over again. It's not me. It's not for me. I don't want to be a Jesus person. Some of you guys, the devil, he's got you so wrapped, so totally bought into the baloney that he's selling that you're just sitting there, not even hearing what I'm saying. But guys, the word of God, the truth of God is bigger. And he's speaking to you right now. Not me, not Matt Clark, Pastor Matt from Church on Fire in Harrison, but the Lord. It's in the book. It's real. He loves you, and he has made you to shift history. It's not a hype message. Guys, some of you don't believe it, though. And, oh, if you would believe it, if you would latch on to it. Friends, this crazy man jumping on stage, singing out of tune, it wouldn't seem it's ridiculous. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, open our hearts. Open our eyes for what you want to do in us, Lord. Anything we've believed, any lies that we've bought, we just rebuke them now in Jesus' name. We bind up the enemy in this room. We bind up Satan. We bind up the demons in this room. And we cast them out in Jesus' name. Guys, he's real. Oh, I'm not, I'm not a fire and brimstone guy. I've actually, I've walked out of a few fire and brimstone messages, but this is real. It's not a fire and brimstone message. It's a Jesus loves you and he created you to shift history message. You were made, say it with me, to shift history. Guys, some of you in here, you've, you've, you've given your lives to the Lord. You believe that he's the Lord of your life, and he is. And I'm so stoked for you. We're going to spend the rest of our lives loving him together. But even inside you, there's something crying out. I know I love Jesus, but there's more. I want it, God. Whatever you've got, more. Give it to me. I want it all. It's because you were made to shift history, and your perspective isn't big enough. Because God wants you to know, hey, we're going to change nations, not just workplaces. We're going to shift history, not just your classroom. I'm not going to change the course of your life. Your whole family's going to get saved, and they're going to save the rest of their city, and then you're going to get sent out into the nations to save other cities. It's real, and he made you to shift history. Some of you guys in here, Some of you just come, almost dragged here by your parents, kicking and screaming, you know. I don't want to, Mom. Dad, it's just, it's just another church thing. And some of you guys clawed your way here. You raised money, you fundraised, you called people, good on you. Way to go. Some of you, you just got kicked out the door. And guys, oh, he's real. Oh, he's real. For you sitting in here wondering if it's real. Oh, just a show of hands from the leaders of the youth groups in here. How many of you left jobs to become a youth leader? How many of you left jobs to become a youth leader? Kids, students, look around. Friends, look around. Some of us. How many of you guys could have had other opportunities? Youth leader maybe wasn't your first choice. Hands up. Not that you did it begrudgingly. But it just wasn't what you saw in the cards for yourself. Now there's, there's, there's people in here. Guys, we gave up everything so that we could come and tell you that it's real. Friends. Oh. So, there's a hunger. Oh, there's a hunger in this room. It's stirring. I can feel it. There's a hunger stirring. Guys, let's stand on our feet together. Van, why don't you guys come up, please? Oh, Jesus, stir the hunger in this room. Stir the hunger. Only you can fill it. Only radical faith bent on shifting history will fill it, God, and we receive that faith. Jesus, oh, come. Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, come and fill us, Lord. Okay, friends, if you were one of those three categories, if you, if you came here begrudgingly and you felt like, you know what, this is the one I've been waiting to hear because nobody told me I could shift history. People just told me Jesus would make my life better. That's not a knock on anybody that you've, you've heard before. But you can shift history. And some of you have just been waiting for the, the sellout message. 
If you're one of that, if you're one of that people group, guys, there, there's a time for eyes closed, hands in the air. There is a time for it. I'm not knocking it. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But there's a time to put your foot in the ground and say, devil, you don't have a hold of me anymore. I'm a free man. I'm a free woman. There's a time to walk up in front of all your friends and all the people that brought you here and say, I don't care what you think because he's more worth it. The time is now. I would like you to come forward if that's you, if you're one of the group that says, I love Jesus and there's a hunger in my gut, but I, I just, I, I want more. Come forward, okay? If, if you're one of the group that, that says, oh, that says he's good, I've, I've heard it maybe before once or twice, uh, I, I've even believed it for a season, but oh, I want to latch on to something permanent. I want to latch on to something eternal. Come forward, because they're all friends. 10,000 years from now, when we're standing on the shores of eternity, we'll look back at this moment and say, you were there, and look what God did in us. It's real. We're going to enter into a song, and after we play a bit of the song, this hunger that's stirring in your gut, we're going to release a shout. We're going to release a shout so that all of the realms, spiritual, all of our friends standing in this room, hopefully most of Harrison, can hear that we're about to shift history. So let's, let's sing together. Let's sing together the song that we have. And friends, stir the hunger in your gut. Stir the hunger in your gut as you sing this song. As you believe, not think, as you believe that this is true, that you have radical faith to shift history. It's not a it's not a little thing, it's not a, a cry out. This shout is a declaration to yourself and everyone around you, to all the angels and the demons that look on us that says, I'm done with the old, I'm into the new, and Jesus is all. This shout it comes from the gut. It's not a not a little throaty yell. This shout is a declaration. Friends, we're gonna release it in a second. And after we release it, leaders. Uh, the youth leaders you're released to just pray over your students, to just declare the truths of heaven over them. And we'll just enter into a little bit of a time of, of worship and extended worship and prayer for each other. After this shout, that's what we'll do, okay? Is everyone clear? On the count of three, you guys don't need your voice. It's President's Weekend, right? You got three days to get it back. Let the Lord know. Let all of heaven know. On the count of three, one, two, three. Keep it going. Let them know. Keep it going. Guys, I just encourage you to spread out. To spread out and have your time with the Lord.
Okay, friends, our leaders can pray for us, and please, leaders, continue to pray for the students, for these young nation shifters, history shifters. But friends, there's something about when you stand next to a brother and sister and say, we're gonna shift history. So now I release you guys and do it. Pray for each other. If all you can say is, Lord, help them shift history, that's all it'll take. So just link arms with one another and pray, Lord, shift history in this one. Lord, shift history. And if you don't know their name and it's awkward, just ask. Hey, what's your name, brother? And then say, Lord, shift history. So pair together as we enter back into worship and pray for each other. Leaders, continue to pray for the students. Father, thank you, Jesus, that these young ones will shift history. Thank you, God. Lord, bless them. Let their walk never falter. Let the favor of God dwell in their lives. Lord, let them never shift to the left or the right. Jesus, bless them all their days. Bless them, Lord, with favor. Bless them with courage, with zeal. Jesus, come and fill them. Come and fill them, Holy Spirit. Bless them and show them. Show them the gifts you have. Lord, bless them. Jesus, we love you. God, it's about you. It's not about a movement. It's not about a cause. It's not about numbers or a building. It's about a, a, a releasing of the glory of God. Jesus, we love you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. It's about you, Jesus. Be glorified in this place, Lord. Be glorified, Jesus. It's you and only you. Only you can shift the hearts of men. And only you, Lord, only you can do it. And we partner with you. We want to be in agreement with what you're doing on the earth. Lord, we love you. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord. It's you, God. It's all about you. It's all about you. Oh, Jesus. Sing this out with me. 